everyone. We are Project 21032, and we are rapid prototyping of shock isolators sponsored by Northrop Grumman. Um, my name is Savannah Armstrong, and I'm majoring in mechanical engineering. My name is Daniel Kotlier, and I'm also majoring in mechanical engineering. My name is Cameron Lipon, and I'm, almost, I'm also majoring in mechanical engineering. My name is Ian Lisk, and I am majoring in industrial engineering. I'm Trey Sari, and I'm a mechanical engineer as well. And I'm Christian Tegel, and I am a mechanical engineer too. To start, we have our poster of the overall progress made during our project. Our goal is to deliver isolators to Northrop Grumman that will attenuate high vibrational and shock loads for sensitive components on their vehicles. The methods, results of our research, transmissibility curves, testing, and shape of our chosen isolators are shown along with our conclusions and future work. Northrop Grumman Space Systems launch vehicles are equipped with sensitive avionics. To protect these avionics from high loads, they are mounted to shock isolators. These isolators attenuate the energy going into the hardware to reduce damage. The objective of this project is to use 3D printing to develop a design and process to produce an elastomeric isolator. The final product needs to be affordably and reliably produced, as isolators currently used by Northrop Grumman cost $500 and have a lead time of six months. Our delivered isolator is printed in a resin material using a Formlabs Form 3D printer. The isolator is then secured to an aluminum plate and core using glue. We will show in this video our isolator successfully dampens vibrations and shocks. Here's our verification matrix for our V3 isolator. Our key system requirements were the natural frequency range and quality factor. Both were verified to be in the range needed by our vibration table testing in Northrop Grumman's test facilities. The only requirements remaining involve static loading and shock loading. Currently, Northrop Grumman is testing the static loading requirement, and we are on track to test the shock loading requirement before design day on May 3rd. Agile emphasizes iteration as fast as possible, so our process was to design, analyze, test, and repeat the cycle. You can see how our problem statement led to our development of design and testing equipment. We delivered three primary versions at ISR1, ISR2, and final acceptance review. There were several experimental versions leading to V3. Here's our system block diagram. This is a basic diagram of how our design process is laid out as we only have one component in our system, which is the isolator. Next, we have our high level methods. We start at the beginning by testing the Lord shock isolator in order to develop a baseline to design towards. As you know, this is a valid production isolator. Then we design a new isolator and perform some analysis as a function of geometry in ANSYS. Next, we compare that analysis to previous models analysis and observe the differences in order to approximate what the real life performance of this version would even be. We expect that that model will pass verification tests in real life, then we'll manufacture and perform these tests. These tests are performed on our low frequency vibration table that we have designed and manufactured ourselves. The testing, testing data analysis and ANSYS analysis were some of the most time consuming processes for our team, as we had to learn vibration theory, ANSYS analysis, and vibration data analysis more or less from the ground up. Here's our vibration table and testing setup. The vibration table is made up of a shaker motor for vibration creation, a tire for ground isolation, and aluminum base plate. Then a 10 pound solid steel mass is mounted on top of the isolators, which is mounted to that base plate. The base and output plates are then both instrumented with accelerometers, which go through the data collection system as mentioned before. This test setup was able to obtain isolator natural frequencies to within a few hertz of what the final acceptance test setup was able to achieve, which is quite good for how basic the setup is. Now moving on, here is the setup at the Northrop Grumman site in Chandler, where we completed our final acceptance tests. This is the same type of setup as before, where we mount the mask to our isolators and then shake it. However, their shaker motor allows for fine frequency and forge precision in a single axis, which allows us to focus in on accurately finding our natural frequency and dynamic amplitude, as well as verifying our survivability requirements. Our printer, the Form Labs Form 3, was selected based on its many materials and its extensive warranty package. This balances out the negatives of resin printing such as the high failure rate with the positives. There are three subcomponents to the isolators, each with their own steps. The isolators are printed, the cores are laid, and the plates are stamped. The final design that we've chosen is our experimental version six, revision I, which will now be called our V3 version. It has a size of two by two by 0.97 inches, a natural frequency of 37.8 Hertz, a quality factor of 1.92 as well as we are waiting for static loading results from Northrop Grumman as they're performing that test from us. We also have a pass on our temperature test. And some of the features of the design are a diaphragm shape, which is defined by parametric sine equations, or a fine top and bottom of the center tube in order to reduce material tearing as that was a large issue for us during testing, as well as a refined plate lip to facilitate easy and effective mounting plate attachment. 
On the right side, you can see our design in ANSYS with a principal stress overlay, along with the final version of our transmissibility curve, showing our quality factor and natural frequency. This chart summarizes our main delivered versions and the experimental versions leading to V3. V1 was based off of a Lord isolator and was printed in ADA resin. The top lip on this design fractured at the location of the pleat during testing. V2 used the same geometry as the V1 design, but was printed using 50A resin. After V2 was developed, it was determined through analysis that 50A would be a better material to meet our requirements. V3 is the XV6I isolator design discussed previously. To summarize a, a few of the key experimental versions, XV5 was the first and only attempt at casting all printed molds printed with defects and could not be used. XV7 were based on other common isolators, but featured a sloping parametric sign curve for the lower portion. Both the XV7 designs had failures in the adhesion between the metal cores and the resin during testing at Northrop Grumman. The XV9 design variants featured an internal structure. During testing at Northrop Grumman, cracks formed where the isolator contacted the aluminum core. Our V3 design can be manufactured in a total of 11 hours and 10 minutes, with a materials cost of $11.61 for four units. The materials costs assume stock is purchased in the correct dimensions and of course will be lower for wholesale suppliers, which we did not use. Here you can see our thought process when it came to our analysis. So we wanted all of our decisions to be backed by analysis. You know, with only limited resin, we wanted to prevent any needless iterations and you know, be way off and waste our resin. So what we thought was to use uh, the most convenient finite element analysis tool, and this happened to be ANSYS, it was provided by the school. And with ANSYS, we can use a static structural analysis to find a stiffness K and a natural frequency that can be reasonably predicted. And with this predicted natural frequency, our designs could be changed accordingly. And here you can see the deformation of V3 or XV6I when subjected to a roughly 10 Newton force or 2.25 pound force. So deformation was used to find the stiffness and the natural frequency. And from ANSYS, we were able to get a natural frequency of 88.47 Hertz. Now, this is way off from our actual, and that's because of an approximation we use. We use a material, a predefined material in ANSYS that behaved similarly to our material, and we didn't have the material properties of our material, so we couldn't use our own. Once we had enough points between real life and our data, our predictions, the correlation between ANSYS and real life was developed, and the predicted value we ended up getting for this isolator was 33.96 hertz when the actual was 37.8 hertz. And eventually our prediction led to about a 10% error. Here we have our deliverable summary. We completed verification testing with Northrop Grumman and are on track to submit our final acceptance review documentation package. Once the documentation package is approved, we will send Northrop Grumman the CAD files, a set of V3 isolators and the Form Labs Form 3 printer. In conclusion, our method and design produce functional shock isolators. Our design decisions were supported through software analysis and testing. V3 is low cost and requires little time to produce, solving two key problems for the sponsor. For future work, casting should be further explored as it expands the material options. Countless new geometries can be created to impact natural frequency, and adhesion between the core and resin material needs further testing as that's where most of our failures in the experimental versions occurred. Thank you for watching. We enjoyed presenting our final product to you. Thank you to Northrop Grumman for sponsoring this project and to our mentor, Claude Merrill.